So there are several tricks for using ultrasound to help our in-office arthroscopy procedure. The overriding concept is we'd like to match what we do in surgery so we can get the same visualization. Here we have the patient in the beach chair position. I typically operate in a lateral decubitus, but we can easily convert to beach chair position when we use these needle arthroscopes in the office. After drawing the bony anatomy, we can identify the posterior portal by centralizing the glenohumeral joint with the ultrasound transducer. Once we have that entry portal localized, we can spray some methyl chloride. We can inject a little bit of lidocaine at the portal site, which is what you see here. And then we wait approximately five or six minutes to let the lidocaine set up so that the rest of the procedure is minimally uncomfortable for the patient. We're using a transducer friendly uh, type of prep. It does not have alcohol in it. You can see we're using a transducer cover. This is a shorter cover. It's not the three or four foot long cover that becomes unwieldy, but it's a nice sterile transducer cover that protects the transducer as much as it protects the patient. And now on the screen, we're getting the typical posterior glenohumeral joint view that is commonly used in shoulder ultrasound. We can use dynamic motion, so I can have my patient here internally and externally rotate as we look. Uh, here, this patient's very experienced with ultrasound, so he can even uh, hit a button on the transducer to help measure and to help um, go deeper or more shallow as we need to with the image. So what we're doing here is we're getting a dynamic view of the image so that we are certain that our transducer is directly over the glenohumeral joint from the posterior approach. Once we have the joint centered on the display, then we know the exact angle to place our MyEye 2 needle arthroscopy device. Of course, the portal location is going to vary based on every patient. Uh, typically, it's between one and two centimeters distal and medial to the posterior lateral edge of the acromion. But the nice thing about using ultrasound is we can be sure that we're directly over the joint and we don't have to worry about guessing. Um, here we can see, once again, the, the bony anatomy on the superior shoulder. And now what we're about to do is take a 22 gauge spinal needle and use that to directly enter the joint in an off axis injection while under ultrasound guidance. So here you can see the 22 gauge spinal needle is just superior to the transducer, traveling in a path right down the middle of the transducer, um, parallel to the, to the uh, transducer, if you will, into the glenohumeral joint. We can watch that dynamically on the ultrasound monitor and once we have the 22 gauge needle into the joint, we, we know our path for the MyI2 needle, and we also know that we can inflate a little bit of normal saline if we want to, to gently inflate the joint and make the, the rest of the procedure a little bit easier. So here we see the 22 gauge needle going straight down the path of the ultrasound. We know that that's going into the joint because we're looking simultaneously at the ultrasound display. So once again, there's no more guesswork with where to place the posterior shoulder arthroscopy portal. Once we have that spinal needle intraarticular, we really don't need the ultrasound anymore because the remainder of the procedure will be to anesthetize the soft tissues and then to take our MyI2 needle along the same path as that spinal needle. We can also get our depth measurement from the ultrasound display so for example, we can see that that needle is going down about three centimeters into the joint. Here we are injecting a little bit of uh, a normal saline. And as we get into the soft tissues, we can inject a little bit of local anesthetic like lidocaine. If we need further confirmation that we're in the joint, uh, we can inject normal saline and then wait to watch the, the back pressure um, push the fluid back out through the spinal needle, which is what you're seeing there. So we can even uh, have additional confirmation of the intraarticular placement. After giving the local anesthetic time to set up, we can then enter the joint along the same line as our spinal needle using the MyI2 needle arthroscopy unit. So here we are going into the joint. Uh, we know our depth. Uh, if necessary, we can even mark our depth on the MyI um, so that we know when to expect to pop through the posterior capsule. Once we're into the joint, we can uh, retract the protective uh, outer sheath of the needle, uh, and then we can use our normal saline to work on our visualization and start the procedure. And so now we have the MyI2 in the shoulder. We've only had to stick the patient in one place by using ultrasound. And now we can go ahead and evaluate the joint. 
So what you see here is our typical in-office setup. We have the tablet sitting on a tray in front of the patient. Uh, the clinician, myself, I'm standing behind the patient. I'm using the MyI2 needle scope to um, visualize the joint from this posterior portal. And here we are looking at the joint. Um, again, with the patient seated, the patient's quite comfortable. You can see I'm asking him questions and pointing things out to him as we do the procedure. You know, we can see, in this case, some degenerative changes, even some little loose bodies. Um, he's had some prior surgery, I believe. And um, here we're able to manipulate all through the joint while using a minimal amount of normal saline to maintain our visualization. Our goal here is not to blow up the joint with 100 cc's of normal saline, but simply to keep enough in the joint so that we can see. Obviously, we don't have cautery. We're not looking to do any type of surgical procedure here. This is purely a diagnostic scope. Um, what I'm demonstrating here is for those of you used to operating in the lateral decubitus position, you can turn the scope 90 degrees and mimic the lateral decubitus position if it helps you identify anatomy and pathology. For me, one of the nice things about setting up the tablet in this way is it allows me to interact with the patient and keep them involved in the procedure. I can, I can talk about things on the screen, I can point towards things on the screen, um, I can show them areas of degenerative changes in the cartilage, for example, I can show them old sutures, I can show them um, intraarticular pathology in general. So um, I really like this setup. We do have monitors in all of our exam rooms and we can hook up the display to a, um, a larger monitor through an HD connection. And I like doing that when I have family members in the room if they'd like to watch the procedure as well. So our goal here is to do these procedures in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, the actual procedure time is hopefully five minutes, um, maybe 10 minutes at the most if there's a lot to look at, but usually we have one or two clinical questions and we can answer those very, very quickly. Um, at the end of the procedure, we do try and remove as much normal saline as possible. And so you'll see us uh, use our syringes to try and aspirate the joint at the end of the procedure. Alternatively, if the goal is to use an orthobiologic, at the end of the procedure, we can put a different syringe on the lower lock and we can inject into the joint. So whether you need to aspirate out normal saline, which I, I guess you would do anyway, even if you're going to inject an orthobiologic, uh, what determines uh, what happens at the very end is whether or not you've made that clinical decision with the patient. So either way, we're taking out the normal saline. And then um, if we've decided to use an orthobiologic, we would put that on at this instance right now. And that would be our PRP or bone marrow concentrate or what have you um, to treat the patient's degenerative joint disease, for example. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope this has been helpful um, in your clinical use.